karma. But there are also the heavy karma on the light, uh, on the positive side as well. For example, if you get jhana and you can maintain jhana, then the last moment you will basically get that jhana and born into Brahma. Okay, so that is the heavy karma, karu karma on the both positive and negative side. But if you don't have that, then there was what what we call the 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 habitual karma. Like you do what you do already do often during the day. Like some people do the chanting or sitting meditation or generosity. You know, they become very habitual of giving. So that will pop up. You know, what you what you do routinely, that will be powerful. It will come and then do. But if you don't have that, then the last moment. It's very important. That's why it's very important to to pick the right person to die yeah, with, uh, because otherwise you'd be in a lot of trouble. There are some sutta uh, uh, in in the Tipitaka mentioned one of the arhant, he fully enlightened, but his his father is a hunter. All his life he's been killing animal a lot, and he know that. His father' life gonna last not last very long, maybe maybe another week. So he decided to to help his father. So he bring his father in the monastery, and put him in the bed facing the stupa, uh, so he can see the stupa. And then he will after he go for arm, he have a he, he you when you go for arm if you have a parent. Father and mother, you can you can give the food to them first. You eat last. Now this is allowable by the Buddha. So he basically take care of his parent, feed feed him, taking good care of him, you know, give him some massage or some cleaning. And when he get a flower, he will give to in his father a uh, uh, hand to pay respect to the stupa. So he he do this for the last moment to so make the, his father thinking of this uh, triple gem, you know, Buddha Dhamma and the Sangha. Then his work, I mean, it's, a, it's part of like a last moment of uh, Kusala Kama. So he, rather than, than fix it on the thing that the animal that he killed, he just now fix on the triple gem. So he reborn in heaven. So this is a thing that you can do if you, if you are basically try to help somebody to remind them of the, the triple gem that, that is a, can be the refuge. If they never with generosity, maybe you uh, suggest that they offering some maybe some dana, offering something, switch it to the to the sangha, yeah. Buddha Dhamma Sangha, something that they can connect to. But because um, this is what provide the meaning in their life, you know, because most, most people might not have that meaning yet. Yeah. If you can connect your meaning with the triple gem, that is the best because the triple gem is still there. Even you die, the Buddha Dhamma Sangha is still there. We will benefit for the rest of the generation. So it's, in that, is a lot of power. But if that person is not religious, never do anything, sometimes very hard, but you can, you can talk to them and then find out what, what do they proud of as born as human. Maybe they proud of their their occupation, maybe their school teacher or the nurse or something. So there should be something that they they proud of that this my life is worth uh, something, right? So you have to find oh maybe they have a family, they raise a kid, and the kid now getting a job, having a family. You know? So you have to to find the thing that is wholesome that that particular person do, and then remind them of that. So that only thing that you do because sometimes you can't force them either. You know, sometimes people are so, uh, you know, like in Thailand, we have the word Buddha, Buddha, you know, right? so you whisper at the hand. Okay, that's work for some people who regularly go to the monastery. You know, sometimes they, they can remind themselves, oh, yeah, they, they've been doing, they go to the monk, they, they're happy to see the monk. So when you remind them of Buddha, they feel good, they feel wholesome. But for some people, they're not never go to the temple. When you say Buddha, Buddha, they fight very agitated, you know. So yeah, in that case, you just when when you're about to die, you have to rely on that person. You not use your own thing. You have to okay find out what is what is the best for that person. How can we bring the wholesome state of mind? Whatever thing, you know, if they don't like 
uh, would go then maybe if they like classic, you can go turn the classical music on. Uh, at least maybe they're not yet frustrated, so they can turn away my away from the painful that that uh, the disease or illness, you know, because that can be very. If you have a painful, then it's unwholesome. You know, there are a lot of a lot of anger arise, and that that's not a good destination either. So you want to make them um, not. You know, Best thing is to be mindful and recall of the triple gem. But the second base is mindful of the kusala karma that is um, that you can bring it out, and then maybe have some family photo, point them to recall. Oh yeah, you have a very kid, and the kid is now doing fine, and you are you know be part of raising them up. You know, so you have to find something. You have to find some connection, and then focus on that particular point. So there are certain things uh, that you, when you die, you have to. Okay, first thing you have to be able to set up your your affair, you know, in terms of everything like your work. Somebody, you, if you are preoccupied with your work, you have to assign your work to somebody else who can continue to do it for you. Uh, the money, you know, who gonna inherit your th- your thing? Because if you don't do that. When you die, it's gonna be a problem. You have to come back again into that dream and think, okay, I want, I don't want you to get that. I want you to get that. It's a lot of burden for you. So you should set up first, write up what, what you want to give to who, basically. So, so you have to come back after what you can basically go to nibbana or whatever. Actually, if you can let go of everything, that is a final test for you. So set up your affair. Uh, uh, tell about what people. Need. So, and then, if you have any grudge, hold a grudge in anybody, you, you have to forgive. Otherwise, your mind will be trapped in that. Yeah. Not for them, but for you. Uh, you forgive them. If you have debt for anybody, pay the debt. <laughs> uh, because otherwise, it's not good to basically uh, be debt and then you have to come back. But if somebody owes you, forgive about it. <laughs> Because it's not it's not worth it, you know. You can oh, I gonna have this money back. You're not gonna have that. You're gonna die. And what do you do with that money anyway? You know? So let go, forgive. You you are have to prepare yourself for the next life. You know this is not time for hold on to this thing. You have to let go. Even your body is not you now. You have to let go. It's not to mention any external thing. Okay. So set uh, your affair, your your work, your your heritage. Uh, any debt or uh, thing that you owe or somebody owe you, and then asking for forgiveness is very important. Get together the family member, say the thing that you will not have a chance to say again, and you will regret that I didn't say when that person alive. Basically, asking for forgiveness. Okay, so whatever body, speech, or mind that I done. Uh, intention or unintentionally, may you forgive me, yeah. and then forgive each other. Yeah. Preparing the flowering tray, uh, do that ceremonially. I think it's very important to have that ceremonial, and then maybe do some have a chance for them to do some dana. Maybe the last sangha dana, offering food, uh, rope or food to the monks or whatever. Uh, they can, uh, can they can use that. Rust kind of memory to trigger whatever kusala karma connection to this uh, sangha, and then not try to you know you have to keep everything serene and uh, and not not agitate you know sometimes people uh, they don't they cook up all these things in the ICU and all these son and daughter all. Oh, Granny, Kenpa, don't die. <laughs> so you, you, you feel very agitated and you, you're not able to let go. You know? So let them feel, okay, you're free to go. We can take care of ourselves. Don't worry. Just, 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 just go, out, go on. You know? Let go of everything. Don't worry about us. We can take care of ourselves. So you should be able to, to, to do that in the environment where it's quiet, uh, people who can't make up their mind, don't let them in. You know, it's, it's very distraction. You know, it's just they're being quiet. It's better for them maybe to, if if they are, uh, the people come to the monastery, you can do some kind of sitting together, maybe do some chanting together. It's very powerful. 
uh, five of chanting will recall you of the moment you come like this and you know, listen to the Dhamma talk, do some chanting together. That is very wholesome. You can hold a person's hand. You can even say something because even the person is gone, they, they hear is still hearing well. So they can use it. Sometimes they just wait for something. Yeah, they haven't said goodbye to any person. Maybe if you know, you let that person meet. Sometimes one day they meet that person, they know that person well, they just let go and they, they can can leave this life. So you try to make the worry or anything free of remorse, free of this kind of attachment as much as possible. Provide that that secluded condition for people to to go to the next world in the in the very um, serene and, 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 and way. So that, that is the thing that you can you can do to the to the one who are about to die. Yeah. And maybe you can if you are die of terminal cancer, for example, there's no way that you're gonna come back fully function. Maybe you should tell the doctor as well. The doctor should know that. See, I, I was a doctor before, so I tell you the doctor. <laughs> the doctor's job is have to prolong the life as long as possible. I used to be a doctor, so people can die, but not on my call. <laughs> so, so because that, that that what they hire me for. See, and they they pay me for that. So I will put everything. You know, if you come, in, you're not breathing. I just put the tube in. If you're not, uh, your kidney is not working. I just poke the tube in, dialyze it. You. So I, this is the thing that doctor can do. But for what? If you're gonna die anyway from terminal disease, you don't want to have that. You don't want to have this thing poke in your. It would be probably good for the doctor. You know, good for the hospital. <laughs> But it's not good for you, huh? so you have to let the, <laughs> the the doctor know that that is I'm re- I'm ready. <laughs> don't don't do anything uh, invasive. You know, oxygen is okay. Yeah. IV fluid is okay. Maybe antibiotics, <laughs> but probably that's about it. You know, I don't want anything, you know, more uh, uh, intrusive or you don't have to poke or anything. You know, I mean, you, you have to know. If it's a uh, terminal illness, it's still not gonna come back to normal. You can keep going down, down, down. So you're gonna die from sooner or later. You'd better be die with um, you know with consciousness and thing, and then you know, have the doctor know. And then okay, one thing you have to tell your your all uh, your family member. They have to have the same agreement. See, because as a doctor, if only one member doesn't agree, then he can sue you. So you not want to do that. So if any one of them agree, okay, I cannot do everything. So then the doctor has to follow that because this is a doctor's job. So you have to come with consensus. Yeah. Have family members come together and the one who who about to die have to sell you, you this is my intention. And then all the family will agree. Okay, that's, that's very important. Because what happens is sometimes Usually the people who are far away, because they're not with the patient. The people with the patient, they know how suffer the patient is. And they person say, okay, yes, yeah, good that you can live uh, peacefully. But usually the one, sometimes like the daughter or the son who haven't been made for so long, they, they start, uh, they do the business abroad and they just fly in and they just, they just say, do everything <laughs> because they are, they are so far away. I think they want to compensate the fact that they're not with the parents. So this is the way of compensate, okay, do everything. But do everything is not good for the patient. So you have to explain to them that this is not, um, maybe it's not the way you try to so, uh, push for so long and then just, uh, suffering for a long time might not be a good idea because he's better to be transmitted to the next life in the because we know that this is not in most people, unless you are Han, but most people are not. So you have to prepare that person for the next state, which is more in terms of the quiet and set up the affair that I talk about. So because the body, the doctor can't do, I mean, <laughs> this is a limitation, right? I mean, uh, you're gonna die anyway for one day or the other. So this is the time come, and then if you understand the process of karma and next life, then you should be able to, to manage thing that can help in terms of the, the last moment and let the disease uh, leave the world with peace, peace of mind and all these things prepare. Okay? <laughs> so,
Yeah. Okay, there are some questions about morphine. Um, yeah, I think morphine is a good painkiller. Um, um, you can, I think, on my experience, you can use that uh, as a, because when you have a pain, um, it's also not very difficult to maintain your state of mind. The pain is usually overwhelming, and you have a negative or anger. So normally, the morphine, if you are conscious, you can adjust by yourself. They have a drip where you can adjust how much you need, but they have a cap. You can't do it too much as well, but they, so you can do it. Um, I, I think it's, it's worth giving in terms of morphine, but, but some people are, uh, fear that morphine might interfere with their mindfulness. See, when you bombard yourself with morphine, your mindfulness is lost. And then the Buddha said, when you die with uh, delusion, without mindfulness, then it's not a good destination. So some practitioner say, oh, I don't want morphine whatsoever. But I think I, I would not adopt that strict position because when the pain comes, it's, it's really bad, you know. So you should, you should be able to uh, maybe not the pain enough for you to be able to be mindful of. You know, if the pain, pain is so overwhelming, then you can't be mindful of that pain. So you can adjust the morphine in such a way that, of course, it's not going to completely go away. You know, some people use the morphine to basically stop breathing because if you too, do, do, do too much morphine, you, you can stop breathing and then you die that way. But it's probably not a good way of that in terms of Buddhist because you are, you'll be in that cloudy state of mind. So if you understand the process of, of, of dying, then you can adjust your own morphine in such a way that the pain is not so overwhelming. You can maintain mindfulness enough for you to be able to deal with that last uh, process. Not to say, oh, I will not have morphine whatsoever. I don't think it's a, it's a good choice. I think you should be able to use that in just a certain way. These days, they have this kind of... If, by the way, if you don't want to die in a hospital, that's also possible now. I think they have this team where you can go to supervise a house and then set up the thing. You know, if you need anything like oxygen or morphine, they can provide you with that. Maybe it's better to die at home because um, you surround with the family. In, in the old time, people die at home, basically. You know, they, they just call family member together. They just put the candle at the end and then you know that, you know, that we don't have any way of prolonged life, you know. So when, when time comes, you just, you just leave, you know, not, I mean, it just, I think in, in the way it's much more in line with the Buddhism more than this way that we, we try to struggle, we try to hold on as much as possible. This is the concept of the, the Western, they say, you only live once. So, <laughs> so, so if you only live once, then you try to make it as long as possible. But you not only live, but <laughs> you live for many, many times. But okay, this life is precious. It's, if you still make it, uh, if you practice, okay, it's, it's, it's uh, very important. But uh, if the time comes, then you should be able to, to let go as well. So I think if you set up before preparing what you need, you know, contact with the hospital, you should let send the team. Uh, you can manage to uh, have some family member around. And I think that uh, that is... Uh, Way. But you have to make this happen. By default, you will go there to ICU. <laughs> people will pump you up. So you have to plan ahead. And this is what I want to tell people around you to know. Okay, this day, I think by default, more than 80 or 90 percent of people will die in the hospital somewhere of this intervention. Uh, so if you want things to happen, you have to. <laughs> to tell, you, know, you have to manage, you have to arrange for that.